Park City High School is back playing the beautiful game. And how did they get their season started? We'll let you know. Plus, we catch up with one of their top players who's heading into his senior season. That plus, we're catching up with the athletic director at Wasatch High School to talk about the success of the winter sports programs down in Heber City. You're not going to want to miss it. All that and more coming up right now on the scoreboard. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome on in to the scoreboard. We are very happy to have you here. It is our Tuesday, March 8th episode and we are uh, in the thick of the spring sports season. I say in the thick, but we really just are getting kicked off. Just getting started with baseball, softball, lacrosse, soccer, track and field. We've got so much happening here on the scoreboard and we are all very, very excited about it. Just wanna give a quick shout out to all those athletes and uh, coaches, athletic directors who are giving us the time. We're having so much fun sitting down in this sort of preseason lull. We're just now starting to get to go to some games and we are really excited about that. Today on the scoreboard, we wanna let you know we are catching up with Harrison Polychronis, who is a senior standout soccer player at Park City High School and he is looking to make a huge statement with the Miners as they head into their final uh, uh, excuse me, as they head into their first part of region play here in the next couple of weeks. And then the state tournament, obviously, is just a couple of months away. So we'll have all those updates for you here on the scoreboard. Other than that, we're talking with an athletic director at one of the most successful high schools in our area when it comes to 5A sports. All that is coming up. But first, let's get to this week in sports. We want to talk a little bit about what teams are playing this week. So let's get right into it. Park City High School, first of all, as we mentioned, Boys soccer, they had a three to nothing win over Bear River. That was last night. Today, or excuse me, tomorrow, they're gonna be facing off against the very tough RSL Academy. It's gonna be a home game, very exciting. Gonna to wanna to get out and uh, check that game out for sure. It's gonna be a, a nail miter and a huge, huge test for the Miners early on. As we move down to softball and baseball, not so much in the softball realm, but baseball also kicks off this week and boys lacrosse, they'll be heading down to Bountiful to play their season opener. Now we move down to Heber City, Wasatch High School. They are gonna be playing a couple of soccer games as well. They had their season opener just yesterday also claiming a win over Timpview. And then we talk a little bit about softball. They're going to be traveling quite a bit this week. They've got a away game at Uinta, and then they're going to be gone all weekend for a St. George tournament. Same thing with their baseball team, so we wish them the best of luck. We actually got to catch up with Morgan Smith, the head coach of the softball team. Very cool interview. We're excited to show that here in these next couple of episodes. Now, let's head up to North Summit High School in Colville. We're going to be talking a little bit about boys soccer, also a little bit about softball and baseball. Not too much to cover, but they are going to be playing their first season games here for all three of those sports here in the next week and a half or so. As for South Summit, boys soccer is also getting in the books when it comes to their season openers. Softball, sort of the same thing. We are, again, just kicking things off. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of these very talented teams from not only Colville, Camas, but our main cities here, Heber City, as well as Park City. That'll do it for this week in sports. You're definitely going to want to tune in. When we come back, we're going to be talking with Harrison Polychronis, the star uh, defensive player for the Park City Miners boys soccer team. All that and more coming up next. The scoreboard is proudly sponsored by Andrea Cox Mortgage. Welcome to First Rate Mortgage. My name's James and I've been in the market for mortgages several times over the years, so I've gone through the process with different people. And uh, when I met Andrea, she explained to me why my current loans were subpar and how she could get better loans with better rates. If I had to describe Andrea in one word, I think I would use the word passionate. She is very passionate about what she does and getting the right solutions for her clients. Uh, and that made her an absolute pleasure to work with. Hi, I'm Andrea Cox. You can reach me at 435-631-9262. Call me, text me, or you can reach me on my website, andreacoxmortgage.com. Hey, 
Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back on into the scoreboard. I'm your host, Brigham Harris, for today's Tuesday episode. We are going to send things right over to my interview with Harrison Polychronus, who is a senior. He is a center back for the Park City Miners, and he is one of the standout players for this boys soccer team. If you don't know a whole lot about the Miners boys soccer program, it is a very, very storied program. They have come so close to winning both the 3A, 4A, and the 5A state titles in just the last 15 years or so. Um, on a bit of a roller coaster as they are now with a brand new head coach who is also a phenomenal uh, man. We're going to get to chat with him here in the coming weeks. But for right now, let's catch up with Harrison Polychronus, who just finished off a 3 to nothing victory over Bear River High School. Hey, what's up, everyone? Brigham Harris here for the scoreboard, and we are catching up with Harrison Polychronus, a senior for Park City High School boys soccer. Harrison, uh, you guys just ran away with a 3 nothing win over Bear River. Yes, How you feeling? Uh, feeling good. We we haven't been connected for very long. We just had tryouts last week, and I think going into our first game after two days of training, 3-0 is pretty good to me. Yeah. We scored early on, and from there we just kind of took control, and from there on out it was a, it was a win, yeah. but it was awesome. Good to see the boys back together. Excited for my senior year. Yeah. Well, we're in preseason, like you mentioned, of your senior year. This is the last time you'll get to play yeah. on this uh, this beautiful turf Park City field. Those are the best, field, <laughs> best field ever. What, what are some uh, expectations or maybe some goals you have for your senior season? Uh, I think with the team and the caliber that we're at, I think we're looking to win state, and I think we have the team to do that. We have we've all we've had team chemistry for six or seven years. We've all been playing together, and I think it's our year. I think we're ready to go. Speaking of a state championship, and I I, I hate to I don't know if this is a bitter subject, yeah. but we know that a, a very close to you guys rival team Wasatch, Wasatch High School, they won state last year, they and did. and you guys weren't able to get a game with them this year. Yeah. Are you kind of bummed that you missed out? Did you wish you could have had them? I, I, Wasatch versus us is always a fun game, especially at home when we can have fans and it's not 13 degrees outside, right. but Wasatch, I definitely wanted to play Wasatch this year. I have a bunch of buddies that play down there, but I think it's good for us to start with something new in a new region, coming from the region down in Provo. But I think I, I wish we played Wasatch. Yeah, yeah. it's always <laughs> sure. a good rivalry. So. Yeah, rivalry games are always fun. But like you mentioned, you're in a new region. Tell me just a little bit about the the newness of that region. Is there a team in the region that you guys talk a lot about? Like a team like man, we really got to bring it to them. Or I think especially with our football team being good rivals with Brighton. I think that's going to be a big one for us, and I think Olympus is always tough in every sport, so I think those are the two big ones that we're looking out for. But I think we can beat any team in this region, and I think we're going to beat every team in this region. So, Well, you've also got a brand-new uh, head coach. Tell me just a little bit about the change going. I know you've been here for a handful of years now. Yeah. Tell me about the change in leadership and how it's been this first week. Well, we as you, if you look at our roster, we have a bunch of seniors, and I think every one of our seniors is capable of leading in a different way. But with our new coach, Anthony Tatisho, uh, he's he's a great coach. He's been with uh, the high school for a couple years now, and I think he can take us to the level that we need to be at. Yeah. How do you feel like the coaching level has changed? Does he focus more on maybe possession ball? That's a lot yeah. what we saw today, a lot of side-to-side -side possession. A lot of possession ball. Uh, we like to keep it super simple in the midfield, and when those long counter balls are on, we like to hit them. But a big thing of his is fitness. Fitness is big thing of his and I think it's going to take a big part in our season and I think it will make the difference in the final 10 minutes of every game. Yeah. How, how do you feel and this was my least favorite part of every single year how do you feel the preseason conditioning is treating you guys? Oh yeah that was a fun <laughs> one especially in tryouts it was it was long but I think it's going to pay off in the end. Yeah for sure well we're looking forward uh, to covering you guys some more. Awesome. Harrison one. Polychronus one of the longer names in the region but hey we look forward to covering you congratulations again on the three nothing win and we'll see you uh, probably next week. Awesome. Harrison, thank you so much, and congratulations again. 1-0 is the start for Park City Miners boys soccer team. Also, just down the road, who we actually talked a little bit about in that interview, is the Wasatch boys team, the defending 5A state champs. They're also 1-0 starting on their season. And interestingly enough, we are not going to have a Miners versus Wasps regular season game this year. It was not scheduled. And uh, I, I got to tell you, me and Harrison are not the only ones who are a little bit uh, upset about that. So hopefully we see them in the state tournament here in a couple months. Uh, crazier things have definitely happened. When we come back, we're going to be talking with a man who is down there in Heber City, the athletic director at Wasatch High School. We'll be right back.
Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back into the scoreboard. I'm your host Brigham Harris. On this Tuesday episode, we are talking all things spring sports. But before we do that, we want to catch up and uh, congratulate all of our winter sport athletes, especially down there at Wasatch High School. So our field reporter, Brett Martindale, got to catch up with Brad Foster, talk a little bit about the success of Wasatch High School's spring sports programs. With that, let's send it over to Brett. Brad, thank you so much for taking a minute with us today. You bet. Thanks for having me, Brent. Let's talk just a little bit. A uh, very fantastic, successful winter sports season for Wasatch High School. Tell us just a little bit some of the highlights. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one one big one that uh, you and I have already talked about here was uh, the Jaden Hicken situation with uh, yeah. swim. Um, a lot of people it's don't swimming. know. That, yeah, with swim. Um we had both of our teams, both boys and girls, won the region championship outright with uh, with swimming, um, and and it wasn't even close, frankly. No. And it was, I mean, our boys um, they they won, but our girls literally ran away with it in region. They just did so well, um, and uh, and at state they they placed about where they thought they would. I, I talked with Coach Marshing about this for a little bit, right. um, and you know, at a sport like track and like swim. And, and like wrestling too, you can kind of look at where you kind of guess your kids might finish. You can guess the points that you're going to get with that. Um, and you could kind of guesstimate where you might finish and, and then start, start to finagle around, like, what can we do to get a few more points? What can we do to get a few more points? Um, and, and he did that. And, and he's a master at uh, finding points where maybe there shouldn't be any. Um, he did a really great job. But, uh, of course, our boys and girls fell uh, a little short in that state meet. But ex they, they performed better than actually Coach Marson even expected. So, okay. so that was good. And, and what we mentioned here with Jaden, um, he is now a state record holder. Um, he, in the preliminary race on Friday of that state meet, he, he, he hit the fastest time ever in the 100 breaststroke. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so that, that's not going away. And it's funny, but the next day, he uh, he lost in the finals and uh, to to a, a few other guys, but none of them hit the time that he hit no. previously. So his name's going to be up there as a state record, and he wasn't even a state champion, which is kind of an interesting situation. Yeah, you know, and we watched that race, <laughs> and it was literally one of the closest races of any sport I've ever seen. It was four guys, as we were talking about earlier, all within thousandths of a second. It was crazy. <laughs> Well, and, uh, you know, so congratulations, obviously, to and, and, and I know we want to mention more than just Jaden, but we sure. don't have the time, but fabulous, fabulous uh, for the swim teams. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next one, Coach. Basketball? Yeah, so our, our boys and our girls teams, um, I guess, didn't finish as well as they had hoped they would. Um, we, we actually, both teams were on a pretty good little run toward the end of the season. They, they picked up a couple of wins yep. they really needed to pick up. Um, we didn't get that uh, that last spot where hopefully we were hoping for a good seat on the RPI. Yep. But even though we won our last, especially with our boys, I think it was our last four straight. Yep. It didn't bring our RPI up enough to host a home game. So we went down to, to Stansbury and lost a really kind of a heartbreaker game yep. um, with, a, you know, a double overtime situation, a, a technical foul called right in the last couple seconds. And, yeah. um, and, and so we, we lost that game. It was a rough one. And, but I've talked to a lot of our boys recently and they've, uh, they felt pretty good about their season. We've got three boys who are going to sign and go play, um, you know, at the next level at, at college. So um, you mentioned who those guys are. I know yeah, so, talk about Mitch Lind had signed early on. Okay. Yeah, and we're, we're going to do a formal signing for him and for uh, for Joe Wonder. Um, God, now I'm trying, I'm, I'm blanking on the, the third. Those two, though, have, have let me know for sure that they've got uh, those situations set up for them. And I can't remember who the third was, but uh, and it wasn't Brecken because he's already going for football somewhere. But right, right. I was going to, I was wondering if that's what you meant, but okay. Um, name will come to me, but uh, anyway, we're going we're gonna to set up a signing for them. Um, here in the next few days with our, our whole shebang out there in the commons. And those are always good days too, to celebrate what yeah. they've done, even though we didn't get that region title, we didn't get to go deep into state. Um, and then the same kind of situation with the girls, um, we finished decently, you know, with, with them in region, they actually have their team banquet tonight that I'm going to go to and, and we'll celebrate a little bit with them. 
Um, <clears throat> but that's a whole different situation. We have a new coach for the girls and, and Audrey Hole. She's done a great job with them this year. They are, those girls are excited about the program. The, the youth that's coming up looks really good. So, I mean, it's always, you know, next year's going to be great, right? But we really feel that way with our girls' basketball team. There's a, there's a lot of potential there, we think. Coach Foster, and again, I'll call you coach as well because we know you used to be a track and field coach. Coach, thank you for your time. We will get to the second half of that interview when we come back right here on the scoreboard. Located in sunny San Diego, just steps from one of the most prestigious beaches in California. I'm Stephanie J. This is the Opulent Minute. Located just a half a block to La Jolla Shores Beach, this property has amazing outdoor space, which includes a large deck off the living room and decks off each bedroom. The jacuzzi on the back patio is perfect for relaxing in after a long day at the beach. I'm here with Andres, the owner of Dinner with a Chef. Tell us a bit about the services that you offer. We offer personal chef experiences for any occasion where you're able to enjoy your guest while leaving the rest to us. For more information, visit opulentvacations.com. The open contemporary design complete with marble flooring and modern appliances make this the ultimate luxury beach accommodation. Opulent Vacations signature concierge service is included with every reservation. I'm heading down to the beach to soak up some sun. Thanks for watching the Opulent Minute. Book now at opulentvacations.com. Hey everyone, welcome back into the scoreboard. I'm your host, Brigham Harris. And like I said, we're going to send things back over to the second half of that very interesting interview with Brad Foster, the athletic director, former track and field coach at Wasatch High School, talking all about winter sports, the state champions that we had. And in this second half of the interview, we're actually going to be previewing a lot of our spring sports, who he expects to excel down there in Heber City. Let's send it back to Brad and Brent. Let's talk just a little bit more. Uh, let's look at other sports. We have uh, besides the swimming, both men's teams, we did have a big wrestling year for the yeah. the perennially strong <laughs> Wasatch wrestling program. Yeah, it's it's been really fun these last three years to follow wrestling and, uh, frankly, just to get to know the wrestling team. Um, I know Coach Disher's name is is very well known in the wrestling community, and, and uh, you know, I, I've watched a few of his practices, and I've watched during matches how he coaches those boys – right after they come off the mat, whether it's a win or a loss, he's, he's down on a mat with them off to the side, showing them what they needed to do better and how they could get out of a certain hold, how they could do a little better here or there. It's just so impressive to see how he interacts with these boys um, and how well he knows all of them. Um, but on a side on that, on the side, I guess, yeah, wrestling did pretty well again this year. Um, <clears throat> we've sort of, set that expectation for wrestling. Um, you said the perennial, you know, wrestling team and it, they, they are, they've, they've set that expectation for themselves and we did win region. And so um, that was good. We had some really good head to heads with people within our own region. We even pulled Payson in and uh, we went one-on-one -on -one with them at a duel and, um, and uh, they went on to, to do really well in the state tournament as well as you into, and we finished after those two, unfortunately, but um, you never know kind of how the state thing will shake out. And you really hope that your boys will just go out there and do their very best. And, uh, and we did have some really good high finishes in state, a couple of state champions. Um, and, and that's, that's a big deal. I mean, for a kid to go through all four years and to, to end off the senior season with a state championship, Heath Clyde, um, that's awesome. That's yep. awesome for him to be able to say. Heath Clyde, you're a state champion. Yes, sir. How do you feel right now? What's going through your brain? You've been a state champ about 30, about, about an hour now. How, do you, how are you feeling? Uh, it's a crazy feeling. Just uh, all the years and years of preparation of this, it just kind of played out, and I had my opportunity to prove it, and I did. I, I just talked to Ryder Robinson, and he said, and I agree with him, there is no one on this team, there is no one in this stadium that is more deserving of this than you. You have worked so hard. You've lost a couple of big matches in the past. What does it feel like to finally come out on top in your last wrestling match as a high school wrestler? Oh, it feels amazing. Yeah, it couldn't, I don't know, don't even know how to put it into words. It's that, that great of a feeling. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit. About a month and a half ago, we were right down the hall, right around the corner. And I, I got to be honest, you were gutted. You were, you were distraught. Uh, you had just lost in the All-Star Duels. Um, and, and if I'm being completely candid, you, you had lost pretty badly. Yeah. And... 
it was kind of, there were, there were questions as to where am I going to be at in a couple of months? Am I ready for the state tournament? And you come out here and you win the whole thing. It, it's, it's such a beautiful underdog story. Can you tell us a little bit about your perspective of all of this? Um, after that match, I really knew that I had to fix some things and put my head down and go to work if I wanted a state title. Um, I still got quite a, bit, quite a bit to work on, but I feel like it's very achievable if I just um, bust my butt the next couple weeks, and I think it's very achievable. And so me and my coaches, my teammates, we all just put our heads down, and we really wanted this, and so we did everything in our ability to make it happen. And it... So, uh, you know, a couple state champions, that's just perennially an amazing program, Wasatch yeah. Wrestling, as you mentioned. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, we had other clubs and things that did things. Any other uh, uh, winter sports that we want to mention before we look forward a little bit to the spring? No, not not a whole lot. Le a whole lot more going on in the winter. We've got all those sports. Um, they were covered, but spring, yeah, spring's huge. We've got a lot going on this spring. Well, we'll we'll hopefully be able to. You know, the next time we meet, we'll talk a little bit about the encouraging things. We have a state champion boys soccer team they begin next week you mentioned yeah in fact they'll uh, they'll host tip view here on monday and then they'll host yeah. olympus on friday um and uh so yeah we're right to start off we're, we're gonna play two teams that are pretty well known for fielding a good a good soccer club um and and we'll see how we do right off the bat i know that coach Hendry's really excited about the team um he just made cuts yesterday and i i'm i happened in on his uh practice yesterday and um, him and the coaches are up there talking about kids and things. And, and you and I know as coaches that those are the worst days. I mean, yeah. to have to deliberate and, and think about which kid isn't going to make the team and which kid is, I mean, they ended up cutting some great players and wow. it's a, a hard, hard thing to do. Um, and so I, you know, it go, my heart goes out to coach cause that's a tough yeah. one with, with track. I didn't have to do that, but, uh, when I coached basketball, I did. And so I, I definitely can relate. Well, so we got a couple of new coaches as well uh, in our last 30 seconds here. We have new baseball coach, uh, mm -hmm. Coach McKay, we talked about the other day, and uh, and then our new uh, so a girls soccer coach. I guess that's a fall sport. but Yeah, it's fall, but we do have new, the new track coaches too. And, and that's, the new track coaches, yes. So yeah, Sean Bowden, who's been with the program for a long time as a distance coach, and then John Kovach, who's been with football and with track for the last three or four years. Um, track's in good hands, obviously. I, I think they're going to do really well um, over the next few years. They've got some really good kids coming back. And baseball, too. Um, they're, everybody's just kind of getting underway. We're barely past the, uh, the tryout period, so practices are really starting. Games start next week. Going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a busy, busy spring. Well, we look forward to that, Coach Foster, and I keep calling you Coach Brad Foster, the Athletic Director at Wasatch High School. Coach, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll look forward to great things from Wasatch High School. Thanks a lot, Brent. Coach and Brent, thank you so much for the time and for the great interview. We look forward to covering all of Wasatch High School sports. And when we come back, we're going to be wrapping up the show, talking about what we have to expect here in these next few episodes. We'll be right back. When we mentor our youth to be good stewards of the earth, anything is possible. And during the Subaru Share the Love event, Mark Miller Subaru is planting seeds of endless possibilities. Hi, Josh. Hey, Little, are you ready for our tradition? Yes. Awesome, let's go. So what did you learn in school this week? Did you know more people have been to the moon than to the bottom of the ocean? I didn't know that. That's so cool. When this tree and I are as, as big as you, it will give us clean air. Join Mark Miller Subaru in supporting our community during the Subaru Share the Love event happening now. Learn more at markmillersubaru.com.
Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back on into the scoreboard. I'm your host Brigham Harris and this is our final segment of the day. We got to catch up with Harrison Polychronus, the star defensive, basically defensive lineman in terms of football translated over to soccer, the tallest, the biggest, the strongest player, and he is playing that anchor center defensive position for the Miners, holding down a perfect three to nothing win over Bear River. Also, we got to catch up today with Brad Foster, the athletic director over at Wasatch High School, talking about the success of the Wasps during the winter season. We personally, Blake and I, got to uh, catch up with so many of those uh, wrestlers that you talked about, the uh, state champions in both Ryder Robinson, Heath Clyde, but not just them. We had a, a fantastic swimming season out of Jaden Hicken, who set a, like you mentioned, a state record. We also got to catch up with uh, a handful of basketball players, head coach Ballstead, head coach Hull. So much fun and so many promising programs out of Wasatch High School this year. We look forward to seeing the winter sports next year. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we, like you said, have so many spring sports to look forward to. We've got a returning state champ in Wasatch boys soccer, returning state semi-finalist in Wasatch softball, and of course, baseball, lacrosse, all of that good stuff, not to mention track and field. We have got so much more to cover here on the scoreboard. So if you want to tune in, you can always check us out on PCTV. That's every single Tuesday and Friday at 6 and then again at 10 o'clock p.m. Or not, you can check us out on thescoreboardnation.com. You can check all of our episodes through our YouTube links, past interviews, mic'd up coaches, all the fun stuff we love to do. Go ahead and shoot us an email at Brigham at parkcity.tv or Blake at parkcity.tv for any story ideas, any games that you are particularly excited about, the hyped up, the, the rivalry games, we are super, super excited to attend. But with all that being said, we will see you next time right here on The Scoreboard. Thanks for watching.